He's a CEO, a filmmaker, an author, and an inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Caldwell. The reason I'm on an anti-bullying organisation now is because um, at the age of 15, I was out of school. I left school because I was bullied so badly I couldn't take another day of it. I was homeless, had nowhere to live, and like 49% of Australian kids today, I thought, that's it, there's no point being here. I'm worthless, I'm useless, I'm pathetic, I believe everything that's been said to me, I'm going to end it. And that is a real statistic, 49% of Australian youths have considered suicide at some point, so it's quite the epidemic. John, good to see you and thanks for uh, joining us today. Just how difficult is it to go back to school for kids who are the victims of bullying? Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite horrendous. I think there are thousands of kids in Australia right now that are feeling sick to their stomach about, about tomorrow and having to go back to school. Uh, and we're not talking about the kids that are, just might get the odd name call. We're talking about vicious, relentless, never-ending attacks. Bullying is a big problem and it's a little confronting, so I apologise if this does confront anybody. But, uh, but the big problem is that every four days in Australia, someone under the age of 25 kills themselves as a result of bullying. bullying and suicide in youth people is the largest cause of death in Australia, second only to car accidents. So it is a bloody huge problem. Bullying takes on many forms and there's cyberbullying, there's bullying at home, there's bullying at school. And uh, Ruben made the point that I've been through all of those things, and I have. Um, so bullying is very, very close to my heart. There are more openly gay sports people now than there are CEOs. So it's more commonly accepted in the locker room than it is in the boardroom, which is bizarre. The top 1,000 companies in the world, uh, you know, the glass ceiling is still an issue, obviously. There's only 48 women CEOs out of 1,000. There are zero openly gay men running the top 1,000 companies. I work along a, a number of different organisations and I've tried to remain a little independent because in this space there's a big debate around whether it should be more preventative or whether we need stronger laws and I believe we need all of it. I think you need to definitely get in from preschool. I work with students at preschool right through. Preschool, yeah. isn't that? It's just awful to think kids in preschool are being bullied. It is. It's awful but I think the preventative is quite amazing and when you go to schools where they have programs in like a Better Buddies type program, the maturity of these children versus other schools is quite mind-blowing. So I don't want anyone to walk away here not thinking this is a big problem. What I want to say to parents is do not dismiss your children when they say this is happening as kids just being kids, because it's not that. I think the key there was non-judgmental as well. I mean, unless you're in this situation, you don't know what these women are going through. So when they go back after you've helped them, don't write them off because the time that they really do think, I can actually really leave this time, is when they're really going to need the help and support. Yeah. So I think too often people write them off because they went back, but they go back for their children or for security or a whole myriad whole, of reasons that exactly, we don't understand. Exactly. Yeah, have thank some empathy you, on this. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, I'm not right. naive enough to think that I'm going to solve the world's bullying problem, uh, but I do hope to make a significant generational change. And so you were successful in business and then uh, then came, I guess, this need to want to, to give back and, and educate people about so what you went through. Is that how, as simply as it happened? Yeah, yeah I, I always thought success was about making money and buying the newest car and I ended up with a lot of toys and, and something was still missing. So, so I started doing a little bit of work in this space and uh, I didn't know it was really what I needed but it's become an absolute addiction and, uh, and, and it's taken a life of its own and now I'm doing as much as I can for as many people as I can. Obviously it's my job to get up here today and seem like I'm oozing confidence and slightly arrogant to get the message across. I'm really not at all. You have to be humble. You have to always think that there are better people than you. You have to appreciate everything that people do for you and show them that. If you're not humble and you're not genuine, again, waste of time trying to do any of this stuff. I don't think you ever recover from it. And I don't think you, it's the same as the bullying at school. I think uh, I did spend a lot of years talking to kids saying how you overcome it and life gets so much better and you forget about it. And lately I've been telling them that's actually not the truth because those things stick in the back of your mind and it's the same with the violence. You never get over it, I think you learn to cope with it. I've been a little unpopular for my views on thinking, on saying that I don't think you need to be a victim of your circumstances and people constantly ask me and search for 
who was my mentor or what was my magical turning point because they don't want to believe that it, you can just make the difference on your own. Um, and I do believe anyone, anywhere can actually choose to make a difference in their life. Didn't you say, John, that marijuana is not actually that addictive? It's not that addictive and it's got far less side effects than a lot of these others. I guess what, what's your argument then as to how we've legalised for medical purposes the use of things like oxycotton and morphine? Yeah, you can't be driving. Been. You can't be driving on any sort of substance. I, I agree with that part no. of it for sure. I think also we just want to clarify these parents aren't like lighting up a joint for their three-year-old kids. They're putting a few drops into their bottle or whatever. It's such a tiny tiny amount um, and it's it's making a huge difference and they're claiming that it's definitely keeping their children alive. Well, it's definitely John, for and against thank it for you sure. for, call, um, for, for coming in this morning and helping us out with this. Uh, we'll continue this conversation on Facebook.